Let's take a look at this problem taken from the International Mathematical Olympiad 2006. It says, find all integers x, y such that 1 plus 2 to the x plus 2 to the 2x plus 1 equals y squared. When I first saw this problem, I aimed to make a difference of squares. Two things motivated me to do so. First, the right-hand side itself is a perfect square. If we can make left-hand side something simple, plus another perfect squared expression, then we may use the difference of squares, factor it to degenerate into a few simple cases. Secondly, the left-hand side is a quadratic expression about 2 to the x, like this. This term can be rewritten as 2 times 2 to the x whole squared, which makes left-hand side looking at a quadratic expression about 2 to the x. So it should be quite easy to achieve what I said just now. Now the next question is, how do we make up the perfect square on the left-hand side? We have to beware that we do not want to multiply both sides by some non-perfect squared integers to make right-hand side no longer being a square, nor we want the so-called residue after making up a perfect square on the left-hand side to be something ugly, or else we cannot reduce into very few small cases. So I chose to fix 1 and 2 to the x. As in, one I, I keep the term 1, and then rewrite 2 to the x into 2 times 2 to the x minus 1. Then the third term had to be in terms of 2 to the power x minus 1 whole squared, which is actually 2 to the 2x minus 2. Now the equation becomes 1 plus 2 times 2 to the x minus 1 plus 8 times 2 to the x minus 1 whole squared equals y squared. Then I can complete the squares, which gives me 1 plus 2 to the x minus 1 whole squared plus 7 times 2 to the x minus 1 whole squared equals y squared. Then I can move the perfect square to the right hand side as planned in the beginning and factorize. as planned in the beginning then I can continue carrying out my plan which is to factorize now it really depends on where the seven goes so I rewrite that as 7 times 2 to the k, and then the other part would be 2 to the 2x minus 2 minus k, because the total power that we have for 2 is 2x minus 2. Or the other way around, which is that the y plus 1 plus 2 to the x minus 1 would simply be a perfect power of 2. And the remaining, remaining factors goes to the other term. Here k is some integers and notice that we cannot have any solution where x is negative so we may assume x and k to be non-negative integers. Now we come to these two cases and it seems hard to carry on but let's recall what we have been used to face when we solve the Alphantin equations. We usually have the fol following three ending results. A general form of solutions, usually expressed by a parameterization, like this. Where t is any integer. Or a few special solutions usually being very small numbers that be, can be easily tested something like these kind of order pairs or simply no solution 
we can quickly tell that our equation indeed has a solution when x is 0 and y will be 2 or minus 2. This also does not seem to be having infinitely many solutions. So we should end up having a few small number solutions. So what does that imply? It means that we should have no more solutions when x rises over a certain number. So what does that imply? It means that we should have no more solution when x rises over a certain number. And we should look for some patterns that only appear when x is over a certain number. Also, we want some ways to quickly show that the equations would not give any solution in those cases. The quickest way within our reach is by taking modulo some number. As we have so many powers of 2, it's very natural to consider taking modulo some powers of 2. A good thing to note is that once a term is 0 mod some powers of 2, when the index keeps going up, it will be 0 forever. In fact, starting from x equals 4, the left hand side of the two equations that we now have will only differ by 2 when taking mod 8. Notice that 2 to the x minus 1 is now congruent to 0 mod 8. However, we can almost never achieve that at the right hand side. Think about it. When x is at least 4, x minus 1 as said just now is at least 3 and these two indices will have a sum of at least 6. Unless I split these 6 parts of 2, factors of 2, into 5 in one term and 1 into the other term, the difference between them mod 8 cannot be 2. So these are the four possibilities. However, there are two of them that clearly won't hold as the plus expression should be larger than the minus expression. So we can reject these two. Now we can solve them. Now we can solve them. Subtract the two equations to the minute y, then we will have 2 plus 2 to the x equals 7 times 2 to the 2x minus 3 minus 2, while for the other set of equations, we will have 2 plus 2x equals 2 to the 2x minus 3 minus 14 instead. Then we can solve them. We clear the denominators and for the left equation we have no solution as in no integral solution while for the equation at the right we have 2 to the x equals 16 or minus 8, obviously we can reject the minus a case and so x equals 4 and for x equals 4 this expression will equal to 529 and so y equals plus or minus 23 so here we have solved the case where x is larger than or equal to 4 however this is not the end yet we have only dealt with the case when x is at least 4. We still need to check the remaining cases below 4, but this is much easier because there are finally many of them only, and we can surely get through that with time. So when x is 3, this expression will equal to 1 plus 8, which is 9, and then adding by 2 to the 7, which is 1, 2, 8 plus 9, and 1, 3, 7, clearly not a square. When x is 2, this expression would equal to 1 plus 4, which is 5, plus 32, which is 37. Again, clearly not a squared. When x is 1, this expression will be 
11. Again, not a square. When s is 0, this expression is 4. And in this case, y can be 2 or minus 2. So here we are. The final solutions are 0 and plus or minus 2 and 4 plus or minus 23. And these are all the solutions. So let's leave it there. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to suggest any alternative methods in the comments. If you like my videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel right now by clicking on the subscribe button. Thank you for your support. See you next time.